This video is titled, I Don't Argue, The Holy Bible Does This For Me. So many people that call themselves Christians in these last days, they love to try to argue with people that teach and preach the way the Holy Bible is written. I have nine different ministries now that the Lord's given me, and I stay really, really busy. I mean, I'm online night and day, sometimes 15 hours a day, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel the way it was written, and getting the word out. And people just love to try to argue with you. But see, the thing about it is, Christians, if you're really following Jesus Christ the way that the Holy Bible is written, Genesis to Revelation, everything in between, if you repent of your sins after you're saved, when you sin, if you're just getting baptized with water and praying and working towards getting baptized with the Holy Spirit head to toe where the Holy Spirit is actually at your cellular level every through every vein capillary every membrane in your body you don't try to argue with the heathen you just tell them what the Holy Bible says you plant the seed and you walk away it's either going to germinate or it's going to die or Satan or the birds that says will pick it up and scatter it <clears throat> but as far as Christians go they just want to try to debate you they want to try to argue they want to try to debate there is no debating okay God let's just go ahead and, and just break down a little biblical 101 God is a creator of the heavens and the universe he's always been he is he always will be the Holy Bible is God's word period Genesis to Revelation, every book, every chapter, every verse, every word is from God's own mouth. It's transcribed by people he chose to transcribe it. And if a Christian, a person that calls himself a Christian, wants to take the Holy Bible and pick it apart and try to, to say that it doesn't say what it says, then guess what? You're calling God a liar? You may be calling Jesus Christ a liar if you're refuting the red lettering and you're calling the Holy Bible a book of lies. And woe, woe, woe unto you, my friends. It just don't make any sense. I just don't understand the mentality that Christians don't have any fear of my Heavenly Father, the Creator. They don't have any fear of the knowledge he could just snap his fingers and just snuff their life out, snuff the whole universe out with a snap of his fingers. He's, he's omnipotent, omnipresent. He's everywhere, everything. God doesn't play games, man. He's serious. He's holy. He loves everyone with a deep, deep love. He loved us so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But he also loves us enough to tell us that if we refuse his son, Jesus Christ, then he's going to throw us into hell. And refusing Jesus doesn't mean just never being saved. Unfortunately, the majority of the so-called church right now believes once saved, always saved, which is a lie from the pits of hell. <laughs> once saved, always saved is a lie from the pits of hell. The Bible says hundreds of times that once saved, always saved is nothing but a lie from Satan that started out as a tiny little group a long time ago. I talked to my to my aunt and she if they had a, a picture of a woman of God in the Holy Bible her face would be there 103 years old almost just a, a saintly woman of God sharp mind still doing so well and I talked to her about the once saved always saved and she'll tell she told me she was a little girl you saw a little bit of that around and she still remembers what it was called but it was a tiny little bit of it around and now it's everywhere man it runs the whole church you know people want to believe in cheap grace they want to argue with you and try to tell you that Jesus Christ died for all sins, past, present, and future. And they try to give you scriptures that they twist, they cut and paste, slice and dice. They tr twist around like a pretzel at the mall that they give you. They shake cinnamon sugar on and hand it to you. They try to twist it around. And again, I only let the Holy Bible do my arguing. The Holy Bible says, go to the last book, Revelation, the last chapter, the last verse. Read what it says. Whosoever adds even one word to this word, to him I will add all the plagues contained herein. Whoever, whoever takes away even one word, for him I will take away his place in heaven forever. It's plain and simple. There's no ambiguity. There's no reading between the lines. But yet Christians, Christians continue to want to argue the Holy Bible. They want to say that the hundreds of times that God says, 
plain and simple, regular scripture, not twisted, not cherry picked, not sliced and diced, not cut and pasted, not pretzelized. The way it's written in the Bible, proving once saved always saves a lie, they still, they still just are, insist on calling God a liar and calling the Holy Bible a book of lies. They won't listen. And all you can do, my friends, is just share the good news of Jesus Christ with them, tell them the truth, and if they won't listen still, if you keep trying to bring it to them, shake the dust off your feet and move on. It's between them and God then. They, if they don't want to hear it, they're not going to hear it. You know, I've gotten, I've, I've gotten a vision and word from the Holy Spirit on Once Saved, Always Saved, where he's given to me actual vision and word right from the Holy Spirit that shows once saved, always saved people that they're lying and heading to hell. And and they called God a liar. They called God Satan. They called God evil. They called God a false prophet. They called me those names, but they didn't talk to me. They talked to God because he's the one that sent me to give them the message. See, they don't realize that. Most Christians, they, they're, they're little pea brains, don't understand that when you call a messenger of Jesus Christ and God these bad names, you're not calling us the names. You're calling God, Jesus Christ, the ones who sent us these names and again if you if you would just open up your brains and just you know open your eyes take the the hell goggles off you know the blinders the, the scales put out holy spirit vision start seeing the truth of the bible you'd understand my friends it would be so easy it'd be plain as day but you don't want to understand you'd rather just live the easy life the cheap grace life think that jesus christ died on the cross so you could just say a few words and and then uh like like you love to tell me oh uh, well you know paul kid uh I don't believe what you say. Uh, the only thing that's going to happen uh, if I have a lot of sin in my life is uh, I'm still going to go to heaven, but uh, when I get there, I won't get any rewards. and uh, I might just get a little apartment instead of a mansion, but uh, I'm still going to heaven. You know, so in other words, what you just said and that big thing that, you, that I've heard over and over and over and over again that fills me with with righteous anger and holy discontent, what you're saying is, that you believe God's a liar and the Holy Bible is a book of lies because his word and the words from his own mouth, which is his word, refute that over and over again. Or, this is the other big one I get. Uh, well, Paul Kidd, uh, my God, with a little G, uh, my cult leader, my guru, Joseph Prince, uh, he tells me that whenever you say that, uh, that, that we have to repent of sin after being saved, Joseph Prince tells me to take the Holy Bible and throw it out the window. And just throw God's word in the garbage can. And they'll say, oh, oh, wait a minute, poor kid. Uh, I didn't say that. But yeah, you did. By saying you don't believe the word of God, by saying you don't believe what's written in the word of God, you're saying to throw God's word out the window, and you're calling God a liar and the Holy Bible a book of lies. And woe, woe, woe unto you, my friends. This just drives me crazy. Satan is such a liar. He's got you guys buffaloed, man. He's got you guys living on Fantasy Island. He's got you guys living in, living in <laughs> Club Dead. Heading down to hell. You're on hellfare. You're living in hell view. You just don't get it, man. You've got eternal reservations in the hellfire end. Your combinations in the lake of fire in the pit. And you, and you think you're going to heaven, but you're not unless you fall on your knees and repent and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins again. All those sins that have been accumulating in your heart after you were saved. That iniquity, sin pattern. You have to, you have to ask Him to, 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 to forgive you. And if you don't, you'll never step foot in heaven. The Bible says it hundreds of times over and over and over again. Here's more Bible for you. Google this name, Dan Corner, D-A-N-C-O-R-N-E-R, -E and put O-S-A-S -S next to it, or once saved, always saved. Click. You'll find next to the Holy Bible the best resource on the planet that totally, 100% refutes once saved, always saved. But this is cool because instead of digging through the Bible to find all hundreds of verses, Dan Corner's got them right there on that little once saved, always saved site. They show 100% uncut proof that there's no zero chance that the that what what the holy bible says is not true the holy bible is 100 percent true 100 percent factual and all these verses are right there if you can still read those verses my friends and still call god a liar and call the holy bible a book of lies and satan's already got you and your chances of being redeemed are very very slim unless you just fall on your knees and repent and the other problem with you is is you hate to again you like to argue you hate to admit that when we rebuke correct and teach you you say oh Oh, Paul kid, uh, stop judging me. Uh, stop judging me. Only God can judge. You know, just give it a rest, man. Just zip it. You might be selling, but I'm not buying. Paul kid's not buying. I know what the Holy Bible says. It says that when we have brothers and sisters in Christ who've fallen away, they're living in sin and iniquity, 
They've lost their way. We are to rebuke, correct, and teach them to bring them back into the path of righteousness. It's nothing to do with judging. Judging is if I say your hair is too long to go to heaven. Your, your dress is too short. You know, you, you have acne on your face. You won't go to heaven. That's judging. I'm rebuking, correcting, and teaching the way the Holy Bible says. So again, I don't argue with you. I just give you the Bible and walk away. And I recommend Christians, you do the same thing, man. Don't fight these people because they they aren't even real Christians anymore. They, they're so lost and they're so they're, they're, they're so run by Satan. He possesses their heart and soul right now when they live that way. Because God says we can only serve one master, Jesus Christ or Satan. We can't serve both. And when you're away from Jesus Christ, when you're backslidden, after you've been saved, guess what? You're living for Satan. Satan's your God with a little G until you fall on your knees and repent and come back to Jesus Christ. Time's so short, my friends. Jesus Christ is going to break the skies any second of any day now. Only God knows the day and the hour, but God's told us in the Bible. He don't want his children who are watching, waiting, and excited about the rapture like he tells us all to be. He don't want us to be caught off guard. He's promised to, to give us the words, to give us the knowledge, discernment, so we can see the season of his return. We're not just in the season. We're in the end of the season. He's shown me through visions, through dreams, through word that we're here. We're just waiting for God to give the final word. No time to play church anymore, my friends. No time to play Christian. No time to play games. Get right with Jesus Christ now. You Christians who believe once saved, always saved, prosperity doctrine, who believe a false religion like Catholicism, Buddhism, Hinduism, New Age, Chrislam, Islam, Mormonism, um, you know, there's just so many of them out there. Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist. Just get away from that. Fall on your knees. Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to live in your heart. And I'll have a prayer coming up shortly like I do in all my videos. But time is short, my friends. We can't play games anymore. we got to start getting serious for Jesus Christ. we got to start getting out in the fields and reaping the harvest. The harvest is so plentiful, it's rotting in the fields. Jesus asked in the Bible, where are my harvesters at? I'm asking the same question. Where are Christ's harvesters at? We need to share the goodness of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and just start caring enough for, for all those who are dying and going to hell and thank Jesus enough for what he did for us on the cross to get out there and do his will until he returns. Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, please help Christians to stop calling you a liar, to stop calling the Holy Bible a book of lies, and to understand that's exactly what they're doing. I don't cut any corners, Jesus. You know I preach it right down the middle. I tell it the way it's supposed to be taught. And when they do that, there's no other way around it. That's what they're doing, and they don't understand that. How can you call the Creator, His Son, liars? I, I just don't understand it. I, his Holy Word, book of lies, I can't understand it. Please rebuke, correct, teach, convict. Don't give any of us any peace, happiness, joy, comfort, harmony, satisfaction, accomplishments, nothing until we just start believing your Bible the way it's written. Start believing you, God. Start worshiping the way we're supposed to. Get away from false religion and false doctrine. Get out and reap the harvest. Start showing our appreciation for what you did for us on Calvary by getting out there and trying to lead others to the cross where the Holy Spirit can gently kneel us and the precious blood of Jesus can wash away our sins and make us whole. Time is short. Just help us to know Jesus. Help us to get, to get rid of the hell goggles. Put on Holy Spirit vision. And let's start getting right with Jesus Christ now, before it's too late. The precious name I ask you. Amen. As always, my friends, if you watch this video and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you're risen again on the third day. I believe you went back to the right-hand side of the Father in heaven. And since that time, you've been preparing a place in heaven forever for all Christians. Please forgive me my sins, Jesus. Wash my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. Come live in my heart. Cleanse me whole, white as snow. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. Jesus says in the Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. If you'd like me to pray with you to be saved, send me an inbox or a private message. You can call me. I do it on Facebook. I do it here. I'd love to pray with you for salvation. If you have a neighbor, friend, loved one, co-worker who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you're sick, you have a sick neighbor, friend, loved one, co-worker, a sick pet, if you need a job, car, home, food, clothing, water, whatever your needs. If you want someone to pray with you or pray for you, that has faith, I had the gift of faith. I prayed for and God gave me mustard seed faith like the Bible has. He's worked countless miracles. I can't remember all the miracles. He works them daily in my life, through my prayer life, praying for, I get hundreds of requests across the internet and I pray and God works so many miracles. Nothing that I do, the Holy Spirit works through me because I'm a willing vessel and I believe 100% mustard seed faith. I believe in my heart. I speak with my mouth knowing that God will answer all my prayers as long as I ask him within his will. He'll do the same for you, my friends. Thanks for watching this video. Please share with friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, with strangers. Share the link to this video to my, to my whole site. Throw it in a blog or article somewhere online and just let the word of God get out. Never for my glory, always for the glory of Jesus Christ. 
People need to hear the uncut truth from, from God now before time runs out. I pray for you guys every day, and I love you, and I pray that God will bless you. Thank you.